Tachikaze has one rule and one rule only. Eat or be eaten. Survival of the fittest in its most primal form still exists in some parts on planet Kray. However, one dragon learned that being strong isn't only achieved by being the most powerful creature, but that it can also be attained with strong teamwork. And with this, we usher in a new age for Tachikaze, an age where nature's most powerful predators starts working together. This is the age of Thundering Sword Dragon Anger Blader. Anger Blader is the latest VR for Tachikaze. Just like the new VR for Shadows, this unit doesn't fall in the status quo for the clan as it works together with other units instead of outright retiring them for strong effects. Anger Blader's first ability allows you to select your units and equip them to other units and at the same time you can retire one of your opponent's rearguards. This is essentially a one for one trade you can make with your opponent. However, you can also make the better trade and at the same time you aren't making a hard minus as you can have some added benefit from having that extra equip gauge for all your other units. For example, his second ability. As his second ability allows you when he attacks to resend free rearguards with free or more equip gauge and at the same time give your entire front row plus 5k power. This means all your units, even 8k grade ones, can hit your opponent's vanguard. This not only gives you a lot of extra power, but also extra attacks. And resetting units can be very devastating, especially if those units have a lingering effect like additional power, crit, guard restricts, or strong on attack skills, which you would only benefit once from in a normal scenario. And incidentally, we got a couple of those units in this set. However, this card comes with some drawbacks. His main ability forces you to rely on support cards that can generate equipped gauges fast, as without them, this ability won't do much. Yes, his first ability can help you a bit with that, but at the same time, that skill will dwindle your numbers and hand quite heavily if you rely on that to achieve a triple restand. With that said, let's take a look at the support cards as there are quite a few and they are pretty strong in their own right. We start with Clear Out Dragon Sweeper Acro Kanto. This card is the new powerhouse of Tachikaze. This thing gets stronger every single turn as it builds up equip gauges and if your opponent doesn't act quickly, there is nothing they can do to stop this monster. This is your main attacker as it's hard to remove with his massive power during both players turn and build in protection. The card is the ideal target for Anger Blader as by the time they have free gauges they are 24k, meaning when they restand they are 29k or more, so they hit easily over defensive triggers. Another potential power unit is Deflacration Dragon Bomb Raptor. This unit works a bit differently than Sweeper Aquacanto, as this one is a passive and it needs a trigger to gain the gauge and extra power. This card works with Anger's Blader's first ability as you can retire something, give this unit the gauge and then activate his ability to give an additional 10k and potentially more if it has more gauges equipped to it. Another card that gives your power on your units is Angry Roar Dragon Roar Barrio. The only difference is this card does doesn't give itself the equip gauge and power but another rearguard, meaning you can give any unit a crazy amount of power that combined with a nasty effect and potential restand can result in some crazy combos like with an on-hit combo with Sonic Noah. We have some powerful units that can generate insane numbers with gauges, but we also have some cards that use them for a utility purpose, like Destruction Dragon Dark Rex. This card can allow you to exchange two gauges for himself. This is great for scenarios where you gauge him, but you don't have a great free, so you can fix your right. But also as a rearguard, he allows you to get more units onto the field without sacrificing cards from hand. So he can be a great target for retire skills like Sonic Noah. Another utility card is Savage Academian. This unit allows you to recall equipped cards so if you equipped a key piece, you can get it onto the field if you combine it with cards like Slavage Raider or Zandilio Foe. But you can also combine it with herself and Anger Blader to achieve a loop where you can retire your opponent's unit for a single soul blast per unit. We just refer to him Light Blade Dragon Zandilo Foe. This unit allows us to do one of two things with an additional bonus power onto a unit. Being able to generate gauges is nice, but being able to move them is even better as you can build your game plan or change them when things went a bit differently than you had originally planned. The last card that I want to mention is Arm 
Armored Mammoth. I already talked quite a bit about this card on the channel as it can set up kill turns with its guard restriction. But for those who don't know, this card works great with all the new gauge makers and movers as you can give this unit enough gauges to prevent your opponent from guarding his attack. And when you combine it with Savage Raider and Anger Blader, you can potentially set up a two kill attack. The old Tachikaze had some serious resource issues, both Soul and Counter Blast were limited and in high demand. However, this new Anger Blader focus playstyle uses almost none and leaves room for potential extra card that uses Counter Blast or Soul. Only Anger Blader uses the Counter Blast and in the off chance you use um, Dilofo. In terms of Soul, we only have Roar Barrow and Savage Academian if you run her in your build. This gives us room for cards like Death Rex, Mega Rex, and even Blightops. In terms of trigger lineup, you can almost say Crits is the way to go with all the extra power you already have on the board. But with that said, fronts do have some value as well as you will rank up damage very quickly with all the extra power on all your units. Meaning getting them to 5 damage is no hard task and then hitting a front on 4 or 5 units standing is way more devastating than getting a crit trigger. In terms of your imaginary gift marker, I'm more in the camp of Axel 1 than Axel 2 but that choice depends on a couple of factors for your build and current situation. Is your deck heavily built on generating gauges then having more draw can potentially screw you more than help you. Is your deck combo focused then having more draws can help you dig towards those pieces and of course what is in your hand when riding grade 3. Have you everything you need or do you need more cards? All those factors determine which marker is more suited for the situation. But blindly going for Axel 2 like most Axel decks isn't always the right choice for this deck. Angered Blader's main game plan is quite straightforward. Overwhelm your opponent with strong attackers and overrun them with high number of hard hitting attacks. So with that said, let's see how we can stretch and reshape that towards different deck concepts. And we start off with the straight out of the box one. This list has all the big hitters and the support cards to fully benefit from Anger Blader Restand ability. With that said, we can see some new phases in this list. Turbo Simulodon is in this list to achieve a critical mass of equip gauges as fast as possible. And the fact that it can distribute them as please means we can set up more efficiently. All of this goes for Optical Serato as well as it's a great free variant of Turbo Smilodon. The main strategy of this list is to make as many equip gauges as possible and ideally give them to Super Aquacanto and Bomb Raptor as they can become strong attackers and then restand them with Anger Blader to go into a kill with seven high powered attacks in a single turn. This is possible thanks to the many equip gauge generating units as well as powerful beat sticks. Roar Barrio is here to give us either a much stronger attacker or give us our third strong attacker in case that we miss a sweeper Aquacanto or a bomb raptor. Zandilofo is a great gauge generator but it also allows us to get some use out of our savage academian as we can get any of our gauges turned into actual units if we miss a vital piece and we gauged a copy. Now that we've seen the new cards in action let's take a look how things will play out when we combine it with the previous support. This build has the same anger blader core and thus has the same strategy to play. However with the introduction of the old cards to the deck we open ourselves to some other options. First off, now we have a solid backup ride, which in some cases is a better ride target. Giga Rex is the ideal ride target when we couldn't set up enough gauges on our ideal beaters to fully capitalize on Anger Blader's restandability. Also, the fact that this unit can generate a ton of equip gauges out of nowhere means you can set up perfectly for Anger Blader. As we swap utility consistency cards for duplicate ability consistency cards, we can increase our early game. The card in question is Savage Trooper. This card has a similar effect as Sweeper Akrakanto as he built power when gaining gauges. So with that we now have 3 units that can become powerful beaters. This card is the ideal target for Turbo Smilodon and Zandilo Fo. The last new inclusion is Attempt Mammoth. This card is here for early game pressure to ramp up damage quickly or destroy our opponent's hand. But it does have a late game application. In the scenario where your opponent has a couple of PGs in their hand, you can combine this card with Zandilo Fo Roar Barrow and Anger Blader to shred through their hand real quick as they are wasting at least 6 cards from their hand to stop your 2 mammoth attacks. Now with the main build out of the way, let's take a look how we can fully utilize one of my favorite cards from this set. Armored Mammoth. 
Once again, we see the basic Anger Blader support cards. However, they play a different role in this list. Instead that they are the main focus of the strategy, they will fill a support role for your actual finisher. In the early game, you try to push your opponent to 4 or 5 damage with cards like Super Aquacanto, Anger Blader and Roar Barrio. At the same time, you set up your Armored Mammoth with enough gauges to go in for a kill turn. You can do that over the course of multiple turns with cards like Sonic Noah, Zandilofo and Turbo Smilodon. This is an option against non-field disruption decks. But in those scenarios, you can set up a kill turn within one turn with Savage Raider, as this card can be used to move all gauges from one unit to another, so you can move all the gauges from Super Aqua Kanto towards Armor of Mammoth. Sonic Noah is a great addition to the deck for two reasons. It allows us to generate gauges quicker, but it also allows us to draw into our pieces on a faster pace than the natural draws and drive checks. Savage Raider, on the other hand, is a vital part of the kill combo. It allows us to set up an Arm of Mammoth on the spot, either on the turn it was called, or generate a second wind in combination with Anger Blader to overwhelm our opponent. Anger Blader, together with his Dino Army, brings a new playstyle to Tachikaze, where they use the combo of each other by sacrificing other units. This time they combo by working together and empowering each other to overwhelm your opponent. But once again, Tachikaze suffers from the same weakness it did before. It is a deck that relies on having a good workable hand and not gauging too many of your key pieces. Savage Academian was a good step in the right direction, but we have to wait and see what the future brings to Tachikaze. A new age for the dinos? or a catastrophic meteor disaster. A new terror awoke in the deepest jungles of Kray. Its most dangerous trade isn't its brute strength or speed, but its intelligence to band and work together with other monstrous creatures. This time will be known as the Age of Anger Blader. And that wraps up this deck spotlight. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this particular VR and all the support cards around it that we got in this set. If you liked the video then why not slap a like on it and subscribe to the channel to be notified when we bring you more Cardfight Vanguard content. As always this video is brought to you by our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider. I want to thank you guys for supporting us as you make everything possible on this channel. If you do want to support the channel you can simply do that by heading over to patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider and become a Patreon today. Well, with that said, I'm Mr. Timeleap and I see you guys in the next one.